Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about factorizing expressions. And uh, factorizing is, well, when we factorize an expression, essentially what we're doing is the exact opposite of expanding an expression. So we've just looked at expanding, which means to expand some brackets out back into the original terms. Factorizing takes those original uh, terms and uh, sort of compresses, I guess, if that's an opposite of brackets, but we factor out a common fact that we'll see in a moment and sort of squash them back into brackets. Okay, so factorizing gives us an, a new expression with terms inside brackets that is equivalent to the original expression that we had. Okay, now I'm just going to have a look at a graphical example. So you might recall something similar to this from the previous video. So if we make this side length here, three, this one here, four, and this one here, x. Obviously this is three as well. Okay, remember that there are a couple of ways that we can describe the area of both these two shapes, of a and b. So we can describe the area as equal to, area as equal to the area of a plus the area of b. So that looks like our area of A is 3 times 4 plus our area of B, which is 3 times X. Okay? But there is another way that we can do it, which is we could sort of join them together and realize that this 3 is sort of a common side to both of them. Okay? So we could also have, well, let's just for a moment, that's going to be 12 plus 3X. Okay? Uh, we could also have it that our area is equal to, remember, our big length times our big width, okay? So our big length would be 3, so the length of the big shape together, times our width would be 4 times x, or oh, 4 plus x, sorry. So adding those together to get that length, 4 plus x, okay? So that means, therefore, that 3, or factorise the text the other way, that 12 plus 3x is the same thing as 3 times 4 plus x, okay? We're going to see how to be able to negotiate between these two types of expressions, okay? This version here is called the expanded form, and this one here is called the factorized form, okay? So this is the kind of thing that we're going to be doing today, turning these into uh, expressions with brackets, okay? Right, a couple of things that we need to know. Obviously, as I said before, factorizing is the opposite of expanding to factorize and to opposite of expanding. And to factorize an expression, we follow this uh, process down here. So we first find the highest common factor of all the terms in the expression. Secondly, we write the highest common factor out the front of some brackets. Then we divide each term from the expression by our highest common factor and then place them inside the brackets. Now that might sound like a whole lot of stuff that has kind of gone through, but hopefully as you see it come out, you'll, real, you'll see sort of how logical it is and you'll find it quite easy. Then it's probably a good idea to check your factorization by expanding your brackets and comparing it with the original expression. Okay, so that's just a little way to check your own work. All right, so we're going to scroll down here and have a look at some worked examples, probably the best way to do these kinds of algebra things. Okay, a couple of things you're asked to do in your textbook and it's a good idea to get a hold of this early is to find the highest common factor of the following terms. So 16 and 4f. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, at the moment we're going to, I'm going to show you two different ways. The first one is to do up a little highest common factor table like we did in term 1. So 16 is going to be on this side and 4f is going to be on this side. So remember that it's not 16 and 4, f is a factor. It's a part of this term that's multiplied together. Remember that factors are just numbers that are multiplied together to come up with this a new number. Okay, so 4 and f are factors of 4f. Okay, right, now we go through here and writing down all the ways that we can come up with our 16. So we have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Okay, uh, for our 4f, we have 1 times 4 times f, we have 2 times 2 times f. Okay, 
Now, once we're done, done here, we circle all of our, we, well, we sort of mark all of our common factors. Okay, so both sets have twos and they have fours and they have ones. Okay, so what's the highest set of two, two, four, and one? Well, it's four. Okay, so four is our highest common factor of 16 and 4f. Right, so we've got 16. So then we, oh, let's all ask to do in this one. So the highest common factor of these ones is four. Okay, now this next one here, 24n and 16b. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. 24n and 16b. So we have 1 times 24 times n. We have 2 times 12 times n. We have 3 times 8 times n. 4 times 6 times n. 16, 1 times 16 times n. 2 times 8 times n. Uh, 4 times 4 times n. Okay? Ah, B, sorry, they're all Bs down there. Let's fix that up. Uh, ba -ba -ba, B times B times B. Right, let's mark all our common factors. Well, 12, no, not 12. Uh, ones, twos, fours, and eights. So obviously the highest of all those is the eight. So the highest common factor of 24n and 16b is eight. Now, so far, you've seen it just happening with just the numbers only. We haven't worried about the factors happening in the variables. So let's have a look at one where the variables do come into uh, play. So 10ab squared and 25a squared b. So let's draw up our table. Now you might get tired of doing these, but that's where doing this often enough, you start to recognize things. Your mind will come quickly to be able to figure out factors of these sort of numbers. You're not going to be asked to find factors of weird stuff. It, it should be stuff that's quite familiar to you. So on this side of the table, we have 10ab squared and 25a squared b. So to get 10ab squared, we could go 1 times 10 times a times b times b. It's very important that we break this b squared up into b times b. Okay. Uh, now, essentially, once we're getting this long, you can once you've written one set of the pronumerals out in their expanded form, you can just keep going with just the numbers. So 2 times 5, and we're done with that. So in here we have 1 times 25 times a times a times b. So a times a is a squared, b is just b. Uh, 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. So we can see here that our only common factors are 1 and 1 and 5 and 5 in the numbers. So 5 is our highest common factor of the numbers. But now we have some common factors in our letters, so we also have to investigate that. So. Uh, they both have A's and they both have B's. Okay, so our highest common factor is actually 5A and B. Okay, so here's where you can have multiple highest common factors is in algebra. So our highest common factor now for this one is 5AB. Okay, uh, I know this might, sound, it might seem weird for now, but Think about it that if this is just some number and this is just some other number, so it could be whatever creates this final overall number. You'll be able, hopefully better to see later on that that those factors are actually in them. Okay, right. A couple of uh, examples of actually factorizing now. So the essentially the hard work is finding the highest common factors. Okay, so if you can get that under control, the rest of it should come quite easily. So, we're going to factorise these expressions here for time 4 plus 16c. So, I like rewriting them as you know, 4 plus 16c. So the first thing we're going to need to ask ourselves is the highest common factor of 4 and 16c. Um, well, 1 times 4, 2 times 2, 1 times 16 times c, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. So we can see easily that it is 4. Okay, so what we do now is that essentially we are going to divide, well, we're going to write some brackets and put a 4 out the front and then divide each of our terms in here by our highest common factor. So 4 over 4 plus 
16c over 4. Okay? Later on we do algebra, you'll see why this is totally okay to do. Because we're only really multiplying by 1 in here. I don't want to weird you out too much by worrying about it, but trust me, this is okay for us to do mathematically. So let's carry these divisions out. We leave our, fa our factor out the front. 4 divided by 4 is 1 plus 16c divided by 4. Well, we divide our numbers on numbers, so 16 divided by 4 is 4. Leave our c there, and we're done. Right, we can check that this expands okay by drawing our distribution arrows and checking that 4 times 1 plus 4 times c, which is equal to 4 plus uh, oops, 4 times c times 4, 4 times 4 is 16 c. So it does work, okay? Right, our last one here which involves a little bit extra work. So 6a take 15ab. Hopefully you can see now straight away that our letters are going to come into play. So we have 6a and 15ab, okay? 6a is made up of 1 times 6 times a, 2 times 3, 1 times 15 times a times b, 3 times 5. Okay, and we can see our common factors are 1, 3, and a. So our highest common factor is 3a. Right, so that means that we're going to read, we're going to draw our brackets and put, so let me just give myself a bit of room there. I'm going to draw our brackets maybe down here, 3a at the front, and then we divide our terms inside by 3a. So 6a over 3a, take 15ab over 3a. Right, now remembering with your dividing algebraic fractions, you will be able to notice that these a's cancel each other out. So do these a's, they cancel each other out as well. And then we're left with 3a, 6 divided by 3 is 2, minus 15 divided by 3 is 5, and we have the b there, and we're done. Let's expand this to check. So we put in our expansion arrows to remind us what we're doing. So we're left with 3a times 2, minus 3a times 5b, Multiply our numbers together, 3 times 2 is 6a. Take, multiply our numbers, 3 times 5 is 15. Multiply our letters, a, b. Done. Works. Okay, I hope that that uh, video wasn't too much to digest in one hit, but we'll have plenty of chance to practice this in class. Again, factorization is just something that you're able to work out and then add to your toolbox. Okay? Thanks for watching, and make sure you bring any extra questions to class. Bye.